Hello, today I'm going to be sharing with you one of my absolute favourite family recipes. It's a recipe for a lamb tagine. Now a tagine is Moroccan and it's really a casserole by another name, except that a tagine is wonderfully flavoured with fragrant and aromatic spices. It's often sweet and fruity as well with the addition of dried fruits and other exotic ingredients. There are so many different tagine recipes out there. Um, this is a favourite of my family, as I say. It's the very first dish I ever cooked for my husband quite a few years ago now. And it was also one of the first things that I cooked for my children when they were babies to help introduce them to some slightly more exotic flavours and different spices. And um, they, were, they were really quite little at the time. I would puree a, a portion for them and um, we would enjoy the rest. Now the recipe is also a special one for me. It was given to me by a friend many, many years ago, my friend Joni. And so in our household, this tagine has always been known as Joni's lamb tagine. Now, to be absolutely honest, I confess that over the years I've made quite a few changes to the recipe. I'm sure Joni won't mind um, trying out different spices and different ingredients and so on. I'm not sure where her recipe came from originally, but I think she'd made some changes herself as well. So um, that's the great thing I love about recipes that are handed on from one person to the next and everyone makes their own little changes as the years go by. So I am making a lamb tagine, as I said, and the best cut of meat to use for this style of dish is something that lends itself to slow cooking. So don't go for the expensive prime cuts. No need to use um, the sort of succulent leg of lamb for this dish. Um, use lamb shoulder, perhaps, or as I'm using, the neck fillet, which has lovely marbling in it. And when it's cooked really long and slow, releases loads of flavour. So that's what I'm going to use today. I'm going to be cooking the tagine in the simmering oven. You don't need a special pot for cooking a tagine. You get these wonderful funneled tagines uh, that are traditionally used for um, cooking these dishes, but any casserole dish will work just as well. So don't worry if you don't have one of those. And in fact, as I'm going to be cooking this both on the top and in the ovens, you really want a, a, a nice dish of some kind that can be used for, for, for both. So I'm going to start browning my lamb. I've got my pan here on the boiling plate, just heating up with a, a little bit of oil, and I'm going to brown the meat in batches. You don't want to um, overcrowd the pan because the meat then starts to sort of stew rather than brown, and it's nice to get that sort of caramelized edge on the meat. Although traditionally I understand that many tagines are made without this step, and um, you, you don't brown the meat, you just put everything in together and, and cook it slowly together. But I like that little extra flavour you get from, from browning the meat. So that's what I'm going to do. Now you can choose, you can either do this up here on the boiling plate, and there's nothing wrong with that. So I'm just gonna put a handful in there. You can also though, use the floor of the roasting oven for browning your meat. And that way you save little splatters on your enamel from the oil in the pan. And also you preserve heat in the ovens, which is really key if you have an older model of Arga, which loses heat when you've got, um, when you've got the, lids, the lids open. Uh, so you can, you can choose whichever you, you like to do. So just get a nice bit of colour all over the meat. And then using a slotted spoon, you can remove it to, I've got a bowl here, which I'll just put it, put it there and um, we'll then use that same pan for um, softening the onions. I've browned my first batch of the lamb and I'm just going to show you now what I'm, I, I can do as an alternative, which is use the floor of the roasting oven to brown. When you're using something like olive oil, it really does spit and splatter all over the top and it can, it can mark the enamel. And um, so this is a really great way to do things. Particularly if you've got a pan like this that you can remove the handle from. Pop it in on the floor, close the door, and it's nice and quiet and it just does its thing without much interference from you and um, it keeps your top nice and clean. If you prefer to see what's going on and you want to do it on the boiling plate, I really recommend having a nice damp cloth to hand so that you can just keep your top nice and clean and free of all those splatters as you go. So I shall leave that batch there to brown. I'll give it a little stir every couple of minutes until it's nicely bronzed on all sides. And uh, then we'll get on with the rest of the recipe. 
Right, that final batch of meat should be ready now. So I've cooked the meat in three batches. Um, you can hear, probably, that that is just sizzling away really nicely on the bottom of the roasting oven. It's really a third hot plate, if you like, and the temperature sits somewhere between the simmering plate and the boiling plate. So it's a really useful extra surface. Don't forget about it because it's useful for all kinds of things, not just browning meat. So there we go, Ooh, lovely colour on those pieces of lamb there. So I shall add those, add those to my bowl here. There we go. And I'm now going to start by softening, start with softening the onions. So um, that's always a nice, nice base. And I don't want quite such a fierce heat for that. So I'm going to start on the simmering plate here. You shouldn't need to add any more oil because the lamb will have given off a little fat there also. And here you have a choice once again. So I've got a, a sort of finely chopped, just white onion here. You could use a red, red onion if you prefer something a little sweeter. So in it goes. You can either soften your onion here on the simmering plate, but again, if you want to conserve the heat in your ovens, you can do this stage in the simmering oven. So bring it all up to a nice high temperature on the simmering plate here. Then place a lid on your pan and transfer it to the floor of the simmering oven. And after about 10 minutes or so, you'll have lovely softened onions and you're, you're ready to go. So it just depends how much time you've got, uh, whether you're impatient to get things done or, or whether you prefer the hands-off approach um, what I wouldn't recommend is cooking them on the floor of the roasting oven, um, tempting as it is. My husband almost always does this because he, he really prefers to cook in the ovens where he can um, and he almost always burns the onions. So my recommendation is either just have the lid open for a little while while you soften the onions or put them in the simmering oven for that little bit longer and just be a bit patient. So that's what I'm going to do. Give those a nice stir. If you find your pan is very dry, you can add a little bit more oil um, if you feel it needs it. I think mine's fine here. So I'm just then going to place the lid on the pan, like so, there it goes, and pop it into the simmering oven. Handle off, door closed, and the lid down. Now if you have a newer model of Argo, you won't need to be worried in the same way about having the uh, lids up and losing heat from the ovens, but you may still prefer this hands hands off way of cooking. I certainly uh, enjoy cooking this way because it frees me up to do other things rather than standing and stirring. So we'll wait for those onions and while we're just doing that I'm going to show you the first of my spices. I've got a really nice pinch of saffron here which just gives such a, it's a totally unique flavour um, and it is absolutely delicious in this tagine. So I've got a pinch of saffron there. Now to release the flavour from the saffron, you actually need to steep the um, little threads of saffron in some hot water. So this is a recently boiled kettle and I'm just going to put a couple of tablespoonfuls of hot water, not boiling, but hot, into that little dish there with the saffron. Oh, the smell, as soon as I put that warm water over the little threads, there's just the most glorious smell. And I don't know if you can see, but the, that lovely golden yellow color is starting to sort of leach out of, um, of the strands there. So I'm just going to set that to one side. We'll add that to the tagine later. Those onions are nearly ready, so just while I'm waiting for them to fully soften, I'm going to just talk to you about the different spices that I'm going to put into my tagine. Now, this is a tagine I'm making for my family, and I have quite young children, my youngest being just five. Um, so I'm not going to make anything too spicy. Um, I'm not going to put any chilli into my tagine. If you like a, a bit of heat, then you can add a little bit of chilli powder, but I'm going to keep the spicing just lovely and fragrant and aromatic. So what am I going to add? I'm going to have some ground ginger. I'm going to add some cumin, some coriander, ground coriander, smoked paprika, which I just love. It gives that wonderful smoky flavor. So sweet smoked paprika rather than hot. But again, if you prefer a bit of heat, do use hot paprika. And I'm going to add some cinnamon. I'm going to add a couple of cinnamon sticks as I simmer the um, tagine slowly. I'm also going to add in my saffron, which has been soaking here in the water. 
and lots of cracked black pepper. So a really lovely heady mix of spices. Now you can vary the spices according to your tastes, of course. So don't worry if you don't have all of these different spices, if you prefer to just use a couple of them, that's absolutely fine. Or even you can buy a, uh, a blend of spices that's all, all ready to go. This Razal Hanout here um, is a great option and I often use that when I'm making a tagine. So really use whatever you, whatever you enjoy. Um, there are no rules and I'm certainly not suggesting this is a, an, an authentic recipe. It's just my preference and, and the spicing that I've enjoyed over the years. What else am I going to add? Well, I'm going to add a bit of honey, um, lovely and a nice sort of dark, clear honey, absolutely lovely, adds a re really nice sweetness. I'm going to add some tomatoes, um, tin tomatoes to make the sort of saucy uh, nature of the dish. Um, and I'm going to add some dried fruit. Um, again, you can use whichever dried fruits you like. Figs are absolutely wonderful with lamb. I am going to use a mixture actually of some dried apricots and some dates. So I'm going to chop those up quite small and um, add those into the, um, the finished dish and they will just all sort of meld together to create a really glorious, delicious, sweet yet meaty um, casserole. Right here are my onions that I've just taken from the simmering oven. So they're lovely and soft now. So I'm going to start adding my other ingredients. First of all, some garlic. Um, I'm going to add a couple of couple of cloves, just grate those in. So in that all goes. Lovely, give that a quick stir and just cook for a brief moment. And then you can start adding the wonderful spices. That's all, all in there. And I'm just going to tip that in over the onions like so. Give it a really good stir to coat the onions in all that lovely spice mixture. And those wonderful fragrant aromas are really filling the kitchen now. Absolutely wonderful. I'm going to add the lamb back into the pan now. There it goes. Stir to mix it all together. Then I've got the saffron here. Hopefully you can see better than before, the gorgeous colour. You're going to tip that in, including the, um, the, the soaking liquid, put it all in, all that good, good stuff. It's full of flavour. And I'm now going to add some tinned tomatoes. That's going to create the liquid part of the tagine. You could just use stock if you preferred. Um, that would also be absolutely fine and delicious, but I'm going to use some tomatoes. Be a tin and a half here. Whereas if I were cooking this in a conventional oven, I'd probably add a full two tins and possibly a little bit of stock as well. You really just want the meat to be covered. I'm going to add just a touch of water to cover this. Um, you want it to be just covered, but um, not too much. If you do add too much liquid and you find that when you take it out of the simmering oven, you haven't, um, it's too runny, you can simply reduce it on the boiling plate or on the floor of the roasting oven. So there we are, that's looking wonderful. So what else do I need to add? I'm gonna add some cinnamon sticks. I'm gonna add two cinnamon sticks. These are, are quite quite small sort of half sticks. So I'm gonna add two, but if you've got one large one, just break it in half. I'm going to add my lovely honey. So about a tablespoonful of lovely runny honey. In that goes. And then I'm going to add that delicious dried fruit. I've chopped my apricots and dates really into quite small pieces. That's entirely optional, the size you, you cut them into. Some people prefer to have a have nice big chunks of the fruit in their tagines or just cut the apricots perhaps in half or quarters. Um, my family prefer things a little better hidden, I might say, for my uh, youngest child particularly. So I cut the fruit up quite small and I find it just all melds together absolutely beautifully. I'm going to add um, a bit of salt and pepper. I have actually already in that spice mix, I did have um, probably about a quarter of a teaspoonful of cracked black pepper, uh, but I'm going to add just a touch more, I think. Just a little, there we go. 
And that is now ready for the oven. So I'm going to bring that up to the boil and get it bubbling away nicely. And then I shall put a lid on it and pop it into the simmering oven where it's going to cook long and slow. Now you can cook this for as long as you like, really. Um, uh, certainly a good two and a half hours, but um, more if you can. I'm actually cooking this one at lunchtime. We're going to be eating it this evening. You could even make it in the morning and it could just sit there quite happily in the simmering oven all day. And that meat will just become beautifully tender. All the flavors will meld beautifully together. And there really is nothing, you don't need to worry about it, about it drying out. It, it's not going to, it's not going to dry out. There's only one other thing that I am going to add, but I'm not going to add it just yet. I'm going to add a, a tin of chickpeas because I think that gives a lovely um, sort of texture to the tagine and also means you don't have to use quite so much meat. It sort of pads it out a little bit, um, but I'm not going to put those in now. I'll put those in um, probably about 40 minutes or so uh, before I'm ready to ready to serve it. So I'll just bring that up to the boil and into the simmering oven it goes. I've just taken my lamb tagine out of the simmering oven. I put it in much earlier today, it's now the evening, and it is absolutely perfect. The meat is just falling apart, and actually the consistency is spot on too. If you find it's a little bit too runny for you, then just uh, let it bubble away on the boiling plate or on the floor of the roasting oven for a few minutes to reduce the sauce a little bit. But this is perfect for me. I like plenty of sauce. Um, I'm going to serve it with some couscous, so all that will be soaked up by the couscous, really delicious. I added uh, the tin of chickpeas about 40 minutes before the end of the cooking time, just so that they warm through nicely. So it's ready to serve. I'm just going to add a few finishing touches. So I'm going to add just a handful of roughly chopped pistachio nuts. Just gives a lovely little speckle of green across the top, which is quite pretty and a nice little crunch as well. I'm then going to and this is entirely optional, I'm going to add a few little bits of pomegranate to the top. Again, just a lovely um, little bit of colour. There we go, just over the top like so. And it gives such a lovely exotic feel to the tagine. Pomegranate's a fruit that's used a great deal in the Middle East and also uh, in Morocco. So I really do think that's quite a special thing to add there we go, just sort of sprinkle the seeds over the top. They come out quite easily with a spoon there. Sometimes you can just give it a bit of a squeeze and they come out. There we go. And then finally, I'm just going to finish with a little sprinkle of fresh chopped coriander. Oh, that looks absolutely glorious. And it smells so wonderful too, all those lovely, fragrant, exotic spices. That really is a very special dish lovely lamb tagine, slow cooked in the Argus simmering oven. I'm going to serve that with some couscous and that's so simple to cook. It's just couscous. You pour on an equal amount of uh, hot stock or boiling water and you put a lid on top and the couscous just soaks up or steams if you like in that hot stock. Um, it only takes about five minutes or so and then you just put the fork through it, a little bit of olive oil, and I'm gonna stir through some lovely coriander and some chopped parsley as well. Now, all these little embellishments on the top are of course entirely optional. You can just serve it as it is, perhaps with just a little sprinkle of either coriander or parsley, and it will be absolutely delicious. But I do think that looks rather special and I cannot wait to dive in.